Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Spongebob Conspiracy Number 1, The Squilliam Theory by Alex Bale. Now, I've gotten requests to react to Alex Bale's Spongebob Conspiracy videos, and I've heard they're pretty good. I am actually a Spongebob fan myself, so, you know, I, I might be interested in it. I haven't really seen much of his theories. I haven't really seen many Spongebob theories, actually. The only one I have seen is Skin Theory, and I haven't even gotten through the whole video because it's an hour long. But, uh, yeah, anyways, guys, originally in the description, make subscribe to Alex Bale, link, social description, notes. let's get right into it. Squilliam Fancy Son! Squilliam Fancy Son! Squilliam Fancy Son! Squilliam Fancy Son the third is Squidward's rival from high school band uh, class. Oh, yeah. So, I just took my private yacht across my private lake to my private heliport. He's more wealthy, popular, and talented than Squidward, and he always rubs it in his face. Like That's he was in right. the background music. I'm living your dream, <laughs> Squidward. Oh! just succeeding in everything you failed in. But I intend to prove that he's a fraud, using his wealth to make himself seem more popular and talented than he actually is. He goes to ridiculously oh, no, he's hot. and expensive lengths to humiliate Squidward and show his superiority, and I'm gonna prove it. Spongebob is one of my okay. favorite shows from my childhood. Even going Same. back now and rewatching the old ones, it still holds up. You might think, it's just a kid's show, there's no continuity, there's nothing worth theorizing about, but the show constantly brings back characters and oh, yeah. previous episodes. And if you look closely, you can connect the dots it's and like find very interesting stories. And today, I'm going to prove that Squilliam Fancyson III is a manipulative fraud. Okay. Evidence number one, the pet hospital. We first meet Squilliam in season two Man of Geeks. 15, okay. Man Geeks. The episode opens All right. with playing the So I'm just gonna pause it here for those who don't know. I, I, I forgot to say this at the intro, but I did hear that this is one of the lesser theories, and I, I going into it, the fact that it's number one, it's like, yeah, usually the first one isn't really the best, but I've heard the later ones are a lot better. So if you guys want me to react to those after this one, I will definitely check them out, honestly. Clarinet and getting a knock on the door. Yeah, uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street, and I understand you have a dying animal on the premises. Immediately after, Squidward gets a call from Squilliam. Isn't that a reference? A joke, though? I feel like it's a joke. Hello. You've reached the house of unrecognized talent. Please start after the... Sounds as though you've got a dying animal to attend to, eh, hey, old chum? I believe that not only was Squilliam spying on Squidward to know when... Oh, yeah, how did he know that, that, actually? But he also hired the doctor to come and embarrass Squidward. Yeah, uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street. Pet hospital down the street. We have never seen a pet hospital in Bikini Bottom. We've only ever seen just the regular Bikini Bottom hospital. We've seen this purple doctor fish before, oh, yeah. but once again, he's never worked at a pet hospital. We've only ever seen him at the regular general yeah, the hospital. Lad. Well, Mr. Squarepants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Then there's this green fish behind him, and we've only ever seen him as one of the many identical paramedics that work at the Bikini Bottom. The hospital. identical we paramedics. We even see him at the end of the episode to take Squilliam away after fainting. Yeah, four so of it them. it is very likely that Squilliam hired these two and told them to pretend like they're from a pet hospital just to humiliate Squidward. But this is just the start okay. of Squilliam's elaborate lies. Evidence number two. How did he know, though? Bubble. Yeah, that is really In the same question. episode, Squilliam also says... I'm the leader of a big fancy band now, and we're supposed to play the Bubble Bowl next week. Yeah, Band Geeks is such is, a good episode. I'm busy next week and can't make it, so I was hoping you and your band could cover for us. But we've never seen Squilliam's band before, and despite claiming he's true. crazy to make it to the Bubble Bowl, true. he still shows up at the end to watch Squidward's band. So both his excuse and probably his band were made up to pressure Squidward into humiliating himself at the Bubble Bowl. Evidence number three true. is Squilliam's friends. In Probably season true. Three, episode eight, Squilliam returns. Squidward leaves for work and conveniently bumps into Squilliam and all of his fancy friends, despite Squilliam not seeming like the kind of guy that would come near the Krusty Krab. He and his friends make fun of Squidward for working as a cashier. Hold it! Don't tell me! You're a cashier! <laughs> Don't lie. Lying always makes it worse. But I believe that this encounter was planned out by Squilliam in advance, and he hired all of those people to pretend to be his friends. Take a look at Squilliam's friends. They're all nicely dressed, you kind of get the sense that they're fancy, high-status members of Bikini Bottom, but they aren't. This is more like what the fancy rich people in Bikini Bottom look like. True. These are just some regular Bikini Bottom citizens. Most of them usually don't even wear nice clothes like this. And most of them are regulars at the Krusty Krab, and 
Squidward yeah. only knows Squidward is a cashier. Right, Patty doesn't have enough slime. <laughs> These are not the type Jeez, of people William would hang. That's clearly from the later episodes, I guess. But uh, yeah. I, I could see the flaws with this theory, and it's mainly just because, like, they could just reuse their designs. And, uh, yeah, just for budget reasons, like, they don't... Because in the later seasons, like, you know, they had a higher budget, so they could probably, like, not reuse designs. They could probably create their own. But I feel like back then, they had to kind of, like, reuse design. Because, like, a lot of... There are a lot of recurring characters, but I think that's just because of that. I mean, why would Squillium be hanging out with one of Pearl's teenage friends? At the end of the episode, oh, he yeah, admits what? to his whole life being fake. I made everything up about my life. I have no yachts, jets, or anything. I was only trying to impress you. And then, of course, he quickly says he's just kidding. Is that true? Of course not! I felt he's stinking rich! But was he kidding? I mean, obviously, he's rich, but is there a nugget of truth in there? Evidence number four, the statue. In season seven, oh, yeah. episode six, Squidward has to pick up trash for community service, and Squilliam once again conveniently bumps into him and reveals he's cleaned up so much trash that the city actually built a statue of him. Maybe if you clean up Bikini Bottom, they'll build a statue of you. Oh wait, they've already built one of me. I cleaned up all of Bikini Bottom in only one week. I believe that once again, this encounter was staged by Squilliam, and he actually paid to get that statue built. As Squilliam tells Squidward about the statue, a female fish admires it and says, Bless you, Squilliam fancy suit. Bless you. But if you remember, this is one of those friends Squilliam likely paid, making her whole comment uh, very true. fake. By the end of the episode, Squilliam's statue gets destroyed. A police officer approaches, and they have this exchange. This is your statue? It was. Squilliam admits that it's his statue, not the city's. And why else would the officer give him specifically a ticket if it was city property? Evidence number five. Oh, okay. In I guess. In season six, episode 17, Squidward watches well, Squilliam oh, yeah, this. clarinet at a big fancy This episode, concert. I remember this. He receives a standing ovation, causing Squidward to leave angrily. But I believe this entire concert is a scam. Not only has the audience been paid to cheer, but Squilliam never even touches his instrument. Once again, many How do you of the know? audience members were part of Squilliam's quote How do you know? Friends, okay. But yeah. we also never actually see Squilliam play the clarinet. The episode opens right after he's finished. Yeah, but that could be, yeah, that could be the end. I, 100% this is definitely the segment where I paused it too early. Because he's just getting, he's going to explain something. But yeah, this, this is like the end of the concert, I think. That's what it's implying. His performance with the audience cheering, and one member of the audience says, He's such a great musician. He doesn't even have to touch an instrument to be brilliant. Maybe the real reason Squibber leaves so angrily is Ooh. because the audience cheered for Squilliam even though he never even touched his clarinet. Oh, okay. Maybe Squilliam is just never, as bad Yeah, as I paused it way too early. trying to hide it. Squilliam has gone to some pretty extreme lengths just to humiliate Squidward, but nothing, and I mean nothing, compares to what he does next. Evidence number six, the music college. In the same episode, after Squidward leaves the concert, he's approached by the headmistress of the Bikini Bottom prestigious music college. Aren't you the esteemed Squilliam Fancyson the Third, who we all came here to see perform tonight? She mistakes him for Squilliam and offers him a position as a professor. Squidward pretends to be Squilliam. Oh yeah, wait. I actually do remember this episode. I also thought it was very weird that she she mistaked them because they're obviously different. You could tell because the unibrow. Ben teaches a class only for the police to burst in and arrest him, all while he's being filmed on live TV. And I believe that this is Squilliam's most elaborate and most expensive scheme to destroy Squidward both publicly and legally. This encounter where Squidward gets offered a job is already suspiciously convenient, but listen closely to their exchange. I'm Squilliam Fancy Sam. But didn't you just say a minute ago that your name was Squidward Q Tentacles? It is. No, I mean, uh, no, no, I didn't. Well, that's a relief. I mean, what kind of a moron would go to their worst enemy's music recital? What kind of moron would go to their own enemy's music recital? How does she know that Squidward and Oh, Squidward yeah, what? Are 
If she knew who Squidward was, then why didn't she recognize him? Why would she mistake him for Squilliam? This feels way too much. Oh, that's a little weird. Yeah, that is a weird line, I guess. But I guess it's just a, a joke. The headmistress's associate is literally just a guy from the paid audience wearing a disguise. He just threw on some glasses to seem smart. Squilliam knew that Squidward couldn't resist the opportunity to teach in these Oh, no, class, he's hot. Even if it meant breaking the law. My very own music class. Then we get to the Bikini Bottom prestigious music college, and right off the bat, there's something very fishy about this place. The building itself is very green and grimy, and has a very cheap metal look. Nothing about this says prestigious, except for the big sign on top, which feels like the only new thing about this building. I think there is a True. very good chance that Squilliam just bought some old warehouse, then stuck a sign and some paint on it to disguise it as a college. I mean, look at these other schools in Bikini Bottom. They all have a very nice structure and a paint job, but this prestigious music college- Actually, a good point. Going into the classroom, not only does it have another one of Squilliam's friends, but if this is such a prestigious college, how did SpongeBob and Patrick get in here? Would you two numbskulls mind telling me what you're doing in music class anyway? Sure! Patrick's New Year's resolution was to learn to play an instrument. They say it was their New Year's resolution to take a music class, but you'd think it'd be harder for them to get into an esteemed music school if they just decided to go to it on a whim. Yeah, what? Just letting in anyone to sell this ruse. Then, both the police, Squilliam and the headmistress, and a live news broadcast show up at the same time to arrest Squidward for impersonating Squilliam. If the extremely coincidental fact that all of these people suddenly showed up at the same time isn't enough for you to believe that Squilliam set it all up, I've got something that's going to blow your mind. break? Squilliam literally has the police working for him. Squidward Q Tentacles, okay, I'm man. placing you under arrest for impersonating a genius. If that doesn't sound like he's been paid off, I don't know what does. The lengths that Squidward goes to humiliate Squidward are insane. He literally builds statues and entire buildings just to make Squidward feel inferior. But why? Why would anyone go so far to embarrass an old high school band classmate? What happened? He's secretly in love with him. What caused this extreme level of dedication? I'm guessing. Well, unfortunately, we never really get much information. Oh about dang! I really I've wanted that to be the end. I spent hours reading through the SpongeBob Wikipedia and looking at old episodes, and there really just isn't any clues that would explain their weird relationship. I guess we can't solve it. Well, <laughs> either way, All right. that's my theory. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. <laughs> what? Wait a second. Season 6, Episode 5. Oh, okay, episode there's two. more. I thought that was the this end. normal episode where SpongeBob and Patrick <laughs> are <laughs> really out of the ordinary. <laughs> Except I have one question about this episode. Why does Squidward have Squilliam's robe? That is clearly not the purple robe he usually wears. That is Squilliam Fancy Soul Third's robe. Why would Squidward have this? Unless they were more than just classmates. They have once been dating. <laughs> was I right? There's, there's no evidence to support that. No, was I right? Right? Don't be intimidated, Squidward. Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh, no, yeah, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> You can't be. I mean, what kind of a moron would go to their worst enemy's music recital? It's been right in front of us this whole time. <laughs> oh my god. I saw evil harassing teenagers up at Make Out Reef. Ah, uh, Make Out okay. Reef. Good time. <laughs> Good time. most likely to suck in high school. Holy s***. Oh wow, I was right. Oh my, I was actually right. I was actually right. I don't know if that's like a joke ending, but I was right. Oh my god, I knew it. I saw it coming. I saw it co Oh my god, I, I, I saw it co Oh my god. But yeah, honestly, uh, I'd say that was like the only shocking part of the video. I'd say that this video wasn't bad. There are definitely flaws with this series, for example. A lot of it could be excused by like, oh, they didn't have a high budget or... Some of these lines could just be jokes, for example, like the first example he gave with the pet hospital, because I feel like that joke was, oh yeah, that joke was, in the actual episode, was meant to make fun of, like, Squidward being bad at playing the clarinet, because, like, his clarinet playing is so bad it sounds like a dying animal, so that's the joke. So that that's how it could be kind of, like, dismantled, is that there are a lot of, like, lines that could be taken as jokes here and they aren't actually like hints and stuff but I, I would say I guess the, the I mean to be fair that one makes sense and I feel but I feel like that's also kind of a joke
But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, uh, I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like in the video. If you guys wanna want me to react to the other theories, I will gladly do so. But yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!